Hi everybody, this is the lecture to accompany chapter one in your textbook. Please carefully read chapter one as there are a lot of things that I simply don't have time to address in this lecture. Okay, let's talk about speaking in public. When we think of public speaking, we tend to have an image of someone very important, very famous, giving a speech to the world, and that speech is amazing and earth-changing in some way. We don't actually think of ourselves as public speakers. Often, we can't imagine a scenario in which we would actually need to get up in front of a huge crowd and speak. Trust me when I say that even though you may never be the CEO of a large corporation or a famous political figure or anything else that we associate with speaking in public, you will need effective public speaking skills at some point in your life. You're in school, and it's likely that at least in one of your classes you'll need to give some kind of presentation. If you get involved in your community or in politics, there are often occasions you might be called upon to speak. Of course, as a business owner, manager, supervisor, trainer, or even as an employee dealing with the public, you'll need good presentation skills. And life itself will provide many occasions like weddings or funerals where you may be called upon to speak. Unless you spend your life hiding under a rock, at least one of these events will happen to you. So it's good to be prepared. But don't worry, you already possess many of the skills you need to be a successful public speaker. There are several important similarities between regular everyday conversation and public speaking. For instance, in order to hold a conversation, you need to be able to think logically through an idea in order to explain it to someone else. If you tell someone how to get to your house, for instance, you go through the directions logically, usually in a stepwise manner. The same thing holds true for public speaking. You take your audience logically through your information so they understand it. You may not realize this because we do it naturally, but you already tailor your message to your audience. You wouldn't explain something to your four-year-old brother in the same way you would explain it to an adult. You'd approach the topic in a different way and use different words that your brother would understand. You might think that public speakers are excellent storytellers that enthrall audiences, but you are already a good storyteller. In fact, most humans are. Stories are one of the main ways we get our information across. For instance, if you're late for work because some driver nearly sideswiped you, causing you to almost lose control of your car, you wouldn't just get to work and say, sorry, I was late. You'd be very eager to tell the whole story, how you almost died, how the other guy was an idiot. You already know how to do this. Finally, you understand feedback, which we will talk about more in depth in just a minute. Suffice it to say that you can tell if someone is understanding you just by looking at and listening to them. Even though there are lots of similarities between public speaking and conversation, they are certainly not the same thing. And I think that the differences are what scares most people. For one thing, in conversation, you're usually speaking to one or at the most just a few people. Public speaking is done to a larger group of people than some of us are used to and may not be comfortable with. It's also more highly structured. You're going to need to organize your thoughts carefully, think about them, write them down to make sure they make sense. During this course, you're going to learn how to do that. Public speaking requires more formal language than regular conversation. Because you're speaking to a lot of people, you need to make sure you're choosing words that they can all understand in order to get your message across. And it requires a different method of delivery than you are used to in conversation. Generally, you're standing in front of the group you're speaking to and all eyes are on you. That can be very disconcerting to some people. Which leads me to the topic of communication anxiety. That is the fear of public speaking that so many of us feel. Some more than others, but most of us generally feel at least some discomfort when giving a speech. Depending on the circumstances and the audience, I even have moments of anxiety when speaking in public. Yes, your instructor has been known to feel that lump in her throat and her heart that feels like it's going to jump out of her chest. It's very normal. It's nothing to be embarrassed about, even though embarrassment is often one of the first things we feel. Very few of us, however, have glossophobia, which is extreme and irrational fear of speaking in public. Most of us have mild to moderate anxiety, and there are ways of dealing with it. 
The textbook gives an excellent discussion of ways to alleviate anxiety, and I have a document in the module which some students have found to be helpful. One thing you need to realize is that the best way to overcome speaking anxiety is to actually get up and speak. Just like anything else in life, we often fear what we don't understand and don't have any experience doing. So if we just do it, we may find that it's not as bad as we thought. And the more we do it, the less we fear it. Preparation is very important. I can't stress it enough. You need to take the time to think about, research, organize, write, and practice your speech. If you don't take the necessary time to do that, you're going to be very anxious and for good reason. Think positively. I know it might sound silly, but going into your speech with a positive attitude can really help. When you're practicing, visualize yourself doing it right instead of imagining all the things that could go wrong. Realize that even if you think you're falling apart during your speech, it's unlikely that the audience will know or focus on your nervousness. They are there to listen and learn, not to pick apart your delivery. Even if they do notice some nervousness on your part, they will understand. Finally, many of us are perfectionists, and any little mistakes we make during a speech may cause us to spiral out of control. Don't let yourself be your own worst enemy. Realize that no presentation is ever perfect. I make mistakes in lectures and presentations all the time, and I don't let it stop me from getting my message across. One of the most important things you're going to learn in this class is how to think critically and logically and be able to express yourself well in a way that makes sense to your audience. Sadly, critical thinking is under attack these days. In fact, some have described us as being in a post-fact or post-truth society, as if logic, facts, and reasoning no longer have any value. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's very important that you be able to see all the ways in which people come to conclusions and recognize that some of these ways are more likely to result in conclusions that are grounded in reality. The problem with critical thinking is that it takes effort. It's not intuitive. We are naturally attuned to feelings and emotions and often use those things to form opinions and come to conclusions about things. Critical thinking is designed to help us step away from our feelings and opinions and look at issues based on good, solid evidence and facts. Are feelings important? Yes. Can they be a part of the way in which we come to conclusions? Of course. But leaving out logic, evidence, facts, and reasoning, or saying those things are not as important as your opinion or feelings about something, doesn't lead to good arguments. It may be persuasive to a certain percentage of the population, but not to those who have been taught how to think instead of what to think. Another thing you'll come to be familiar with in this class is the speech communication process. Regardless of the kind of communication, whether it's face-to-face, -face, conversation, telephone call, small group meeting, public speech, these seven elements in this illustration are always in play. The speaker, the person with something to say, the message, the idea the speaker wants to get across to somebody else. The channel, the way in which the speaker gets the message across, whether that is face-to-face, -face, over the phone, through text, email, television, Skype. There are many different ways to get a message across. The listener, the someone else the speaker intends the message for. It could be just one person, or it could be the entire planet. Feedback the listener's response to that message. That response can be either verbal or nonverbal. The situation, the time and place, also known as the context in which the communication occurs, what's going on in the environment, the reason the communication is taking place. And finally, interference. Anything physical, mental, or physiological that gets in the way of the message could be physical noise, distracting thoughts, illness, hunger. Those things make it more difficult to listen to and respond to the message. No matter what the situation or how many people are involved, all these elements are part of the communication process. The more you understand about how we communicate with each other, the more effective communicator you're going to be. 
Let's look for a moment specifically at the listener or the person receiving the message. Everything a listener hears is filtered through what's called their frame of reference, which is the entire sum of his or her knowledge, experience, goals, values, attitudes towards the topic. Because we are all different, we all have different frames of reference, and we will all have slightly or very different perceptions of the same message. A good speaker keeps this in mind and tries to adapt their message in a way that makes it easier for the majority of the audience to get the closest to the speaker's original message. Clarity of language and ideas is the key here. Finally, let's talk a bit about culture and diversity when it comes to public speaking. America is a very diverse country. Certainly as a student at a community college, you are well aware that we have a very diverse student population. Thinking about how we filter everything through our individual frame of reference, we can see how misunderstandings might occur just based on the culture in which a listener was raised. Different ideas about the world, different ways of expressing themselves, these can cause misunderstandings, but also be a way to learn about other cultures and beliefs. Unfortunately, humans have a tendency towards ethnocentrism, or the belief that their particular group or culture is superior to other groups or cultures. We still haven't figured out a way to overcome it, and some people feel strongly that we shouldn't. Nevertheless, it's critical that in order to get your ideas across to the largest possible audience in the best possible way, you must consider everyone in your audience as worthy of understanding and being understood. So you'll need to respect the fact that some audience members may have different cultural values and adapt your message to those audience members. Try to see your ideas through their eyes. How might they respond to your ideas? It's just as important for listeners to do the same thing, to try to put themselves in the position of the speaker and see things from their viewpoint. In conclusion, I hope you see how important public speaking is, not just for society as a whole, but for you as an individual. We'll be learning about ways to change public speaking from feeling like a chore that you have to do to get your degree to something that you truly know will make your career as well as your community and personal life better and more fulfilling. This is the end of the lecture on Chapter 1.